Hi, I'm Patrick and this is Brian. Together we are Just Got Played. We are at the Cloak and Blaster here in Orlando, Florida, and we just got done playing Darkness, a game of ancient mysticism. Join us for Darkness, a game of ancient mysticism. Brian, yes. Tell us about darkness, a game of ancient mysticism. Mysticism? Myst yeah, mysticism. Um, sure. Uh, darkness, a game of ancient mysticism, is a is a two to five player game in which uh, takes place in the dark ages of uh, northern Europe, in which the players are assuming the roles of mystics and which are using they their animal spirit powers, which are basically currencies in the game. Um, in order to place bids to win artifacts um, every turn. Uh, the end of the game uh, is at the end of six rounds uh, in which then is a, there's a set collection type mechanic and whoever has the highest number of points is going to be the winner. Um, so as I've mentioned, uh, it's two to, five, uh, two to five players and some of the cards will scale like the number of artifacts in the center that you're simultaneously bidding for during each round. And also, um, there are some relic cards, which are, uh, some of them are worth points, some of them give you special abilities, are also scalable depending on the number of players. Uh, the game takes about 30, about 30 minutes to play, uh, more or less. Uh, obviously, depending on the number of players, that could, that could probably move. Um, basically, what happens is each player is given the same uh, number of 15 um, animal spirit totem cards, uh, which represent all the different types of energy. You have three of each of the different colors, I think, so there's five five different types of spirit animals. I like the ferrets. The ferrets? The ferrets are pretty nice. Ferrets my favorite. Yeah. I think, were those gerbils? No, those are ferrets. Ferrets. They don't have any special powers except for their pictures of ferrets. But True. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to run. So okay. you have three of each of these. Yes, you have three of each of these. So it's almost like a perfect information, at least in terms of the currency that you have. Right. Um, and basically, uh, the game takes place over six rounds, but in each one of those rounds, there are three phases. So during the first phase, everyone is going to look through their currency, and the relics are randomly, I'm sorry, the artifacts are randomly distributed out. They all have a, a major cost on them and then a minor cost. And at the end of the three phases, everyone's gonna have played a total of six of their energy cards, okay? And then whoever has the highest bid for the major uh, cost of each of the artifacts is gonna take those artifacts from the center. Um, if there's a tie, then you can move down to uh, the, the minor cost. Whoever's got the highest minor cost um, will break that tie. Or if nobody, you know, and if there's a zero bid for the first major cost, then you go down to the minor. Um, if there's a double tie after the major and the minor cost, then those cards or those artifacts are removed from that round. Nobody gets those. Rushed. Um, Relics, on the other hand, will stay in place. They, they never get removed unless you actually purchase them. And remember, they give you special abilities in subsequent rounds or additional uh, points. Um, so again, during the first phase, everyone's going to basically simultaneously select the three cards that they want, place them face down to start with. Once everyone's laid them down, everybody reveals. And that kind of gives everybody an insight. They can look and see which type of uh, artifacts the other players are going for. And you really got to watch what the other players are going for because as they start to build those sets and get more and more, they're worth more and more points. So sometimes you're playing yours not only for your points but to deny or to block the other person from, from getting too far ahead. The other type of card in the game is called a darkness card and these um, will be played out along with the artifacts. And anytime these, they kind of act like a catch-up mechanic mechanism. Um, in Sorry, the game, Lance. and uh, if uh, if they are not purchased or they're not really purchased, but if you don't dispel the darkness, then they go into the veil. And anytime the third card goes into the veil, what that does is it triggers darkness, and that darkness will then envelop a lot of the artifacts. And basically, what happens is, is all the players have to discard down to the number of artifacts that the player with the least number of artifacts has. So you made that sound way more thematic than it felt in the game, but we'll get to that. Okay. Um, but with that, um, it takes place uh, over a total of six rounds, and there's three phases per turn. And whoever has the highest number of points at the end of the game is the winner. Uh, with that, Patrick, what would you say is your favorite thing about Darkness? A game I, of ancient mysticism. Mysticism. I, I don't know much about Taylor Haywood, who's the designer of this game, but he might very well be a mathematician. It is so well developed and sculpted point-wise, and so well put together that I, it almost seems like it's an infallible mechanism. Now it is, 
to an extent, I wouldn't say it's a perfect information game, but to an extent, uh, it has a feeling of perfect information. Like, there's definitely the best choices of cards to play, and you have the same ability to play the same cards that I do. So there's no way to kind of interrupt that. I don't have any advantage of you by luck. So uh, it's very, very low luck if you're into that yeah, kind of game. Yeah, I would definitely say it's... It kind of felt like, what, 85%, 90% like known information or skill of strategy, and maybe 10%. There's a little bit of randomness as to which artifacts kind of come out and when the darkness cards happen to come out. But for the most part, it's all bluffing and all perfect. Everyone has the same amount of currency, right? right. So, the, And the only difference would be if there's an additional player or additional few players that can kind of throw a wrench into what you're doing. So, I mean, imagine, you know, playing 21 and knowing the perfect card count, but somebody, the guy next to you can totally screw up. Um, so that's what I was saying. It, it seems... Make, Mechanism-wise, mechanically very, very, very sound. And if you had to pick something that you like the most, uh, the thing that I like best about Darkness is um, I would ha I would have to say it's a it's simple to learn, but it's hard to master. It's one of those games, and and the, the rule book is twelve pages, but it it really could be summed up in like maybe two. So <laughs> Three, it's yeah, maybe. So, so I mean, it's 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 pretty easy to understand and to get up and going, but. There's lots of strategy there, and it's one of those where you know it's it's fun, it's easy to get going, but you really got to play it a couple of times. I think the more you play it, the better you get at like you know bidding and bluffing and you know just figuring out the best mathematical combinations on how to play things and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely easy to learn, difficult to master. I would say. Yes. Yeah. Um, but what would you say is the thing that you like least about Darkness? The thing I like the least, and this is one, this falls into a category of games that I have played, and it's something that I say quite often when we're reviewing these games, is it definitely seems like it has the ability to have a runaway winner or some struggling in the news, especially, especially in a two-player game. I feel like that first person gets way out in front on that first on the first turn, the aggressive at that point you are aggressive you just keep playing aggressively and the other player doesn't have much of a choice except for to throw everything they can at you to try to block you and if you're way out in front i feel like it's very very difficult to catch up there is the darkness ability which can help but as you're collecting sets those sets can help you run away too so yeah I, think I guess might, sometimes so, the darkness, if it if it aligns with what you're with what the player in the lead is actually going for, it's not much of a hindrance. But if it doesn't align, then at least they have to start spending their resources. Otherwise, they're going to have to start discarding a bunch of their stuff. So eh, I can see where it could help. You know, the darkness cards definitely help alleviate some of that uh, runaway runaway lead. So. And it adds some more luck into the game because that's probably one of the very few things that do involve the straight sense of luck. And if there's one thing that you had to pick out that you like the least, I would, I would the thing I like least about Darkness, a uh, game of ancient mysticism, is that the theme doesn't necessarily synergize with the mechanics, mechanisms of the game. I think the, the mechanisms are really solid, um, and the theme is. I mean, there's there's some of the theme this, on its own is good, and the art's pretty decent. The graphic art's great, but to mesh the two, I kind of feel like it could be a little, it could be almost anything that could be on top of the uh, the mechanisms there. You didn't feel anciently mystic. No, uh, my favorite thing was uh, there were some of the Stonehenge things, and then the ferrets. So yeah. Yeah, we like playing green. So I think it was green, wasn't it? The green ferrets. Yes, ferrets are green. Oh. Or gerbils. Well, this, this is. Darkness, a game of ancient mysticism. It's on Kickstarter, probably right now at the time of the video. If not, it's coming out very, very soon. I am Patrick. This is Brian. Together we are Just Got Played at the Cloak and Blaster. Thank you very much for watching.